eating is a concept firmly based in Islam. Allah Azza wa Jal had ordered us to compete in the Quran. So did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And life as we know it is a place of competition. So we live in this life competing with others, trying our level best to reach the ultimate goal which is to strive in seeking Allah's uh, 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 pleasure and reaching Jannat and Naim. However, this is not an easy task and it can have things that would tarnish it, things that would make it unacceptable at the sight of Allah. And it is best that we try our level uh, uh, best to go through things that motivate, motivate us to do good deeds. For example, Allah the Almighty has told us after mentioning the things that are in Jannah and how the righteous people would enjoy it, Allah says, so let all aspirants aspire after that. Let those who compete, compete in that, which means that Allah is encouraging us to compete in seeking paradise. And such a competition would help the Muslim to strive to Allah Azza wa Jal because there will be hurdles in front of him. As in every race, there will be difficulties, there will be challenges. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said this in an authentic hadith. He said, race in doing good deeds. What are we racing against, O Prophet of Allah? The Prophet said, Alayhi Salatu Wasallam, race against patches of dark night, calamities that are as dark as the night where a believer wakes up as a mu'min, as a believer, and by the end of the day, he becomes kafir. The Prophet ﷺ also advised us and instructed us to make five before five, to utilize five before five. He said, utilize your youth before your old age and your health before your illness and your richness before your poor uh, poverty and your free time before you get occupied and your life before your death. All of this is encouragement for us to strive and to compete. The Prophet ﷺ ordered us to make jihad to strive in his cause, in Allah's cause. And he said, whoever dies and does not go for jihad or battle and does not even talk about it with himself or aspire to it, then he will die on a branch of hypocrisy. And that is why the companions understood this. Whenever there was a battle with the Prophet ﷺ, they, were, they used to compete to participate in it. To the extent that even youngsters, as young as 13 and 14, would come to fight with the Prophet ﷺ. And he would not admit only them. He would admit only those who were 15. And in one incident, a companion who was 14, who was rejected by the Prophet ﷺ, when he saw that a friend of his who was 15 was admitted and was allowed to fight, he cried. 
So the Prophet ﷺ told him, why are you crying? He said, because you admitted my friend who's 15 and I am stronger than him and I can win him in wrestling. So the Prophet allowed them to wrestle and when the 14-year-old companion won, he admitted him to battle. So even such competition is encouraged in Islam. Also, giving in charity and to spend when you're young before you are old. To spend in the cause of Allah Azza wa where you are alive before your illness and before dying. This is highly recommended and it is encouraged upon. And this is why the companions, may Allah be pleased with them, used to compete against one another. They came to the Prophet ﷺ once, the poor companions. And they said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, the wealthy among us have gone with the highest degrees and the highest levels of Jannah. Because they pray like we pray and they fast like we fast, but they have access of wealth that they can offer Hajj with, they can offer Umrah with, they can offer Jihad with, and they can give in charity more than what we can give. So the Prophet told them والسلام, and instructed them to give uh, or to say after every fard prayer the supplication we know subhanallah 33 times, alhamdulillah 33 times, Allahu Akbar 33 times, and la ilaha illallah wahda wa la sharika lah lahum mulku wa alhamdu ala kulli shayin qadir to complete the 100. So even the poor were competing with the rich. Abu Bakr and Umar, they used to compete with one another. And Umar once said to himself, today I will beat Abu Bakr in charity. Every time Abu Bakr beats me, today I'm going to beat him. So he went and collected half of his wealth, 50% of all what he owns. And he went to the Prophet ﷺ and said, O Prophet of Allah, this is a charity. So the Prophet said, والسلام, may Allah bless you. What did you leave for your family? So the Prophet, the Umar said, uh, uh, what's equivalent to what you see, O Prophet of Allah? So the Prophet understood that he gave away 50% of his possession. And a while later, Abu Bakr came with a big sack, with a big bundle, and he put it in front of the Prophet ﷺ. And the Prophet said, Abu Bakr, what did you leave for your family? And the, Abu Bakr said, I left for them Allah and his messenger. Which means that he gave away all what he owns, all of his wealth. Umar said, at that incident, Wallahi, by Allah, I will never compete with you, Abu Bakr. Because whoever competes with you will always lose. This shows us that they used to compete with one another in reaching Allah's pleasure. Also, among the doors or the opportunities for competing is to go to the five daily prayers and to hasten in going early to Friday prayers. And we know that men <coughs> are obliged to pray Friday prayers in the masjid, unlike women. And the Prophet ﷺ gave them a competition. So he said, whoever goes in the first hour, he would be as if he has provided or given away a camel in charity. And whoever goes in the second hour, then it would be like a cow, then it would be like a sheep, then in the fourth hour like a chicken in the fifth and last hour it would be like an egg when and when the imam enters the masjid then the angels would fold their uh, record books and they would sit and listen to the imam we also know that it is part of islam to try and win 
few of the things related to prayer. For example, the Prophet said, والسلام, had the people known what virtues are there in the first row and in giving the adhan, the call for prayer, they would fight over it and they would draw lots or flip a coin so that they would decide which one or who would get this reward. Unfortunately, nowadays, if you enter a masjid before salah, you will find the people filling the rows at the back of the masjid and they are not interested in occupying the first row which the Prophet ﷺ has encouraged us to do. Of course, let alone if you ask someone to call the adhan, the majority of Muslims would refrain being shy, being ashamed, or not knowing how to perform the adhan. But if they were requested to be a guest on uh, 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 American uh, Got Talent or uh, uh, American Idol or whatever shows to sing a song or to do something, they would love to compete in that, subhanAllah. The Prophet والسلام, also said to us that this dunya is sweet and green. This incident was when the Prophet ﷺ got some zakat money and some booties of war and it was collected at night. So when the companions heard about it, may Allah be pleased with them, after Fajr prayer, when the Prophet finished the congregation and turned to face them, each one of them, you know, stretched his neck a little bit so that the Prophet would see him and would not forget him when he distributed these uh, uh, great wealth or this great wealth. So the Prophet addressed them and he said to them that, do you think I, am, I was going to forget you? This life, this world is beautiful. It is sweet and green. And Allah Azza wa Jal will make you succeed one another so that he would test you and he would try you and he would see what you will do in it. So fear or uh, 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 protect yourself from this dunya and protect yourself from women because the first tribulation, the first trial of the sons of Israel was in women. And this shows you the great threat and the warning that the Prophet ﷺ is warning us of when we have mixing between the genders as we see it nowadays. Also, in the hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, may Allah be pleased with him, telling us and showing us how the Prophet ﷺ never competed over material things. See, he warns us from dunya and he does not indulge in it because he's our role model. The Prophet once والسلام, slept on a bed of straw that affected his side and it left marks on it. So they suggested that they would give him a better bed. And the Prophet said, what do I do? What do I have to do with this dunya? In this life, I'm merely similar to a rider who on his trip saw a tree so he dismounted and took a short nap in the shade of that tree and then he left it so the tree is not our objective this life is not a muslim's objective the prophet said to ibn umar his brother-in-law and one of the great companions of the prophet he said be in this life as if you are a stranger or a passerby. So we should not live in this dunya as if we are here to stay. We are not. It's a temporary phase. And the smart one is the one who is guided by Allah to do good deeds and to reap the fruit of his work in paradise. 
and whenever it comes to competing we always have to remember that what we do is for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal and not for this dunya the Prophet said alayhi salatu said that there is no envy except in two things someone whom Allah Azza wa Jal has given him the knowledge of the Quran so he recites it during the night and the day and someone who Allah has given him wealth and he is spending it in means that pleases Allah Azza wa Jal. So you can have envy and envy here does not mean you wish that Allah takes it away from him and gives it to you. No, this is not the envy uh, 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 mentioned or meant. It, the, one, the envy that is meant is the envy of wanting to have similar to it but without it leaving an individual so envy which is haram is when i see you driving a beautiful car and i envy you and i say you don't deserve this i wish allah azza wa jal takes it from you or you have a car accident this is haram but the envy that is permissible is that when you wish that you have something similar to it so the prophet says even the envy of wanting to have a similar car to your neighbor without him losing it this is not recommended and it is not encouraged because it is in worldly affairs and worldly matters the only envy that is permissible is in the case of someone who has knowledge you envy him wanting to be like him without him losing his knowledge or with a wealthy person you want to be like him to spend in the cause of Allah and not to spend on uh, worldly matters so competing that we are looking at has to be accompanied by a good intention meaning that I compete with you in prayers I compete in you the numbers of days fasting I compete with you in charity I compete with you in the number of Hajj but the most important thing is that my intention is for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal because when com when I compete with you in religious issues and my intention is to beat you not for the sake of Allah but rather just to win then this is a big problem the Prophet said alayhi salatu salam Allah the Almighty says I am the wealthiest of all partners whoever associate anyone with me I will leave him and his shirk I will leave him and his bad deed because he associated others with me in his intention so we understand from this that you must have your competing with a sincere intention for the sake of Allah otherwise do not compete with others secondly your competition and the way what you're doing has to be in things that deal with the hereafter not with this dunya so you don't compete with others in getting a better job or marrying the most beautiful wife or collecting money and being richer than others or having more children than others no this is not what is intended because such competition leads to destruction the prophet said alayhi salatu wasalam when the companions may allah be pleased with them saw these bounties of war and he, they saw the money and they were hoping to get part of it the Prophet said told them be positive hope for the best and inshallah nothing would happen except what you wish by Allah the Prophet says I do not fear poverty of, uh, uh, upon you what I fear is that this dunya would open upon you like it was opened 
for those before you. And I'm afraid that you will compete in this dunya, in this world, like they have competed, and that it would destroy you like it had destroyed them. And one would say, subhanallah, this goodness, this wealth, this dunya, would it bring harm to us? The answer is yes. And this is the trial of Allah Azza wa Jal to us. Allah has created death and life to test us. Who is among us the best in deeds, not the most in deeds. And that is why competing has to be in things that draw you closer to Allah Azza wa Jal. Materialistic matters are not of importance in the eyes of Islam. That is why the Prophet ﷺ warned us from competing in worldly matters, in wishing and hoping and striving for worldly matters in the sense that it would distract us from what we were originally created for and that is to worship Allah Azza wa Jal. The Prophet said Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam when one of you looks at those who were favored over him in wealth or in creation, meaning in health, in beauty, etc., then one should only look at those who are below him, whom Allah favored him over them. And let's look in materialistic things. If I were to look if I look at those who are better than me, richer than me, wealthier than me, healthier than me, then I would always be dissatisfied. I will never be content. Why? If I have a jet plane and I see someone who has five jet planes, this means that we're all multi-billionaires but still I would envy him because he has more. If I have a beautiful car, but then I see someone who has a US, uh, an SUV and a sports car and a sedan, then I would envy him because he has more than what I have. This way, I will always be discontented. I will always be uh, uh, unpleased with what I have. I have two healthy children, my friend has 10. I have a beautiful wife, my friend has four. I have a good job and my friend has, uh, 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 or he's a CEO of five companies. So I'm always envious, I'm always sad. And this is what the Prophet is warning us from, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If you have a car, don't look at those who have two cars. Look at those who do not have a car and they ride a motorcycle. And if you ride a motorcycle, look at those who don't have a motorcycle and they are riding a bicycle. And if you have a bicycle, praise Allah and thank Him because others don't have a bicycle and they walk. And if you don't have a bicycle and you have only your feet to use, be grateful to Allah Azza wa Jal because there are people who are on their wheelchairs and cannot walk. And if you are on your wheelchair, be grateful and praise Allah the Almighty because there are people who are paralyzed neck down and they are bedridden. And even if you are bedridden, be always grateful to Allah Azza wa Jal that you have your sanity and that you have your brains and that you praise Allah, thank Him, and be grateful for Him. So always look at the, op uh, at the positive side. Always look at the full half of the cup and be grateful to Allah Azza wa Jal as His favors upon you are unlimited. So if we take this concept of sincerity and the concept of competing in the deeds of the hereafter, if we do this, then we will excel in doing good deeds and we will keep on competing with one another 
not necessarily naming people and say, telling them, listen, at the end of the week, I'd like to see how many good deeds you have. No, this is not the way of competing. But rather, if I know that my friend prays night prayer and I don't, I will compete with him without telling him by starting tonight to offer night prayer. If my friends fast Mondays and Thursdays when I don't, then I will try next week to fast Mondays and Thursdays and maybe add to that the three white days of the month so that when the time comes on the Day of Judgment, I would be, inshallah, with the grace of Allah, having a lot of good deeds to help me in my grave and also when I stand in front of Allah, the Almighty, and Allah Azza wa Jal knows best. Well, sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala abdihi wa rasulihi nabiyina Muhammad.